Hello. Yes, everyone can hear me. Uh, cool, I was nervous about that. Um, I'm Abir, I'm the co-founder of Megaco, uh, and today I'm going to talk to you specifically about scaling technologies with Singapore Airlines. Um, I missed the memo about the big ideas part, but I'll try and weave it in. Um, so firstly, I'd like to thank Singapore Airlines. Uh, they've been a fantastic team to work with. Uh, they've actually picked up a lot of our slack when we've not known what to do. And my team, uh, plus four because I didn't have a chance to take pictures, uh, but I will next time around. Um, so I'd like to get started. Uh, we started with a hypothesis. This is a hypothesis for our business, but also fundamentally for a problem we're solving, which is if we can understand context outside of what's happening in the industry, can we then apply this to improve revenue management? So this has been our focus for the last year and a half, two years. And for the most part, we've been getting that, but we had some problems. And I'd like to talk through that. Um, so let's start with some straightforward examples. Uh, the first is a plot. I'm sorry for the crappy graphs. I'll improve them next time. Uh, but you can see a spike um, for 2017, 2018. This is, I think, out of Melbourne, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we were trying to explain it, and we said, working with Singapore Airlines, and we were like, hey, what the hell is this? It's probably Easter, but we don't know what it is. So we started digging up context. We started looking at news. We started looking at whatever else, but we couldn't figure it out until we started looking at simple things like holidays. And we found, regardless of events or whatever you're tracking, the interplay between them matters quite significantly. Um, and this is something we've started to learn and incorporate into our sort of prediction models, uh, specifically for forecasting. Let's look at a slightly more, so the previous one was slightly contrived, it was like an example. This one is a real example that we found and we think is kind of cool. Um, seasonality is very large for most airlines. It means finding signals of where opportunities lie is really small. But actually they exist and there's loads of them. Um, that was a period of interest for us because uh, we knew something happened there and we were trying to prove that it had an impact for Singapore Airlines. Um, we looked at various other ways of trying to figure out how can we prove that there's impact. And fundamentally, we landed on one way, which is comparing all Thursdays across the board for that season and seeing what the outcome was for that specific Thursday. Um, this is one interpretation. There's thousands and thousands of others, and we track all of those to try and extract signals of what impact actually means. Um, I still don't have a conclusive answer. Uh, so this is day before event, day off event. You can see something is different, and we were like, holy shit. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> this is kind of cool. Um, we have something repeatable. We can now start to understand what's happening and what's changing travel behavior. What can we do about it? Um, well, firstly, we said, OK, can we repeat this across different data sets? So this is GDS data and for the same methodology. And we found that there's no signal whatsoever. What does this actually mean for us? It means contextual data is important, and we can actually tie it to very specific personas for Singapore Airlines, because Singapore Airlines customers fly those type of events. And that's kind of cool as well. So that example in particular led to a 20% improvement or uplift in revenue for Singapore Airlines only. And that was without using any personal data um, to try and personalize offers or anything of that sort. So it was purely contextual, purely anonymous, and I think it's kind of cool. Uh, for context, over 2019, across 68 airports which we were tracking, uh, we found 4,700-ish uh, impactful events of this type. Uh, what this means is roughly two months out of a year for every single airport, there is revenue opportunity which is being missed. Um, and this is only for a small slice, which is events. Uh, nothing to do with other stuff, which I'll talk about later, hopefully. Um, but we had a problem. Um, two months out of a year means there's two months worth of actions for revenue managers to take. And that's considerable amount of time away from their day job, which is managing a process. Uh, and the problem for us was there's no action, there's no reward. So if we can't drive an action with the airline, we can't extract value, we can't pay ourselves fundamentally, and we can't pay the airline, we can't prove value. Um, and this is where it became harder and harder for us to think about it. We said, okay, we're working at Singapore Airlines, this is exciting, 
but fundamentally our signals are meant for machines. We can improve forecasting accuracy, we can improve willingness to pay accuracy, we can do all sorts of fun things, but we can't drive action. Um, they stepped in quite nicely and said, have you thought about exploring other opportunities within the airline? Um, and this is kind of cool because this entire time we've been thinking about airlines as revenue management alone, when in actuality it's a department within the airline. So they said sales can use this information and drive revenue management decisions by adding demand at the top level and then telling revenue management how to action those decisions. Um, and then in, I guess in a computer science way, it's kind of like a map reduce on an airline scale. If you want to know what map reduce is, talk to me later. Um, so the actual solution for us was uh, scaling laterally across the organization, not with technology, not with anything fancy, just simply talking to more departments. Uh, increase demand through sales actions, increase collaboration between RM and sales, and actually increase the revenue potential by actioning more of that opportunity rather than uh, letting it go to waste. Um, so we redefined our hypothesis. Understanding context leads to better revenue opportunities. Uh, we no longer limit, limit it to revenue management as actually marketing, advertising, sales, revenue management. Uh, once you understand context and you can understand why people are traveling, uh, even if it's 10%, even if it's 5%, you can action them much better. And I think that's the key that we've learned and something which we want to move forward with. Um, so we moved and we built a product, actually. So this is a product. Uh, we've actually developed it uh, earlier. We started with Air France, and we've iterated and iterated and iterated uh, to get it to the point where we are today. It's actionable. It works across sales and revenue management, which is cool. Um, but fundamentally, it's live. So I, I want to end by saying the point of forecasting is high-velocity retailing. So the more you understand in context, the less you have to go into personal, uh, creepy personal. Um, uh, I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Thank you, Abir. No so, so, so why contextual forecasting? And um, why contextual forecasting? Like I mentioned, it's, there's so much data out there. The airline industry is the most macro industry I can think about. If you can read news and understand how travel behavior is being affected, it's awesome. Um, you can think about it as like uh, a Netflix TV show has come out and it's based out of a certain city. And all of a sudden, hey, uh, people want to travel there. But this has happened across the world everywhere. So if you can understand what's happened previously and you can apply it to something that you know is going to happen, you can improve forecasting accuracy without actually ever touching personal data. And that's kind of cool. So contextual anonymized data is actually a really nice way. It's a counterbalance, so to speak, against uh, Cambridge Analytica or whatever it is. OK. Uh, to your point that you were wrapping up there about uh, the velocity, one, what yeah. makes a contextual stand out, uh, elaborate on that point. Um, so I believe the biggest bottleneck to dynamic pricing or continuous pricing is the confidence in uh, forecasting or the confidence in what passengers or what passenger makes you expect. Um, if you have high confidence in your forecasts, you can set your prices confidently. You don't have to change them very often, uh, which means you solve a lot of efficiencies around caching fundamentally, but also you are confident that the offers you're providing are bundled the right way for the consumers that you expect on that flight. Um, so that's my thesis on it at Fantastic. the moment. Cool. cool. Abir, thank you so much. Thank you. It. Thanks.